The key to the savings function is to be found in our discussion of the consumption function. When we had a look at the consumption function, we said households, the owners of the factors of production, sell their factors of production to firms and in return they get an income. Now the question is, what do members of households do with additional income? Well, they can either spend it or save it. If income increase, we say they can either spend it or they save it. And the more they spend, the less they save. And if they decide to spend less, it implies that they will save more. So income, the additional income, consists of consumption and savings. Now, when we discussed the consumption function, we said if income increased by one rand, we're going to spend a certain proportion, say 80 cent. This would imply if we spend 80 cent that we save 20 cent. We refer to the proportion of additional income that we spend as a marginal propensity to consume or small c. And in our example, it is equal to 0 0,8. And the marginal propensity to save? Well, we know what we don't spend, we save. So the marginal propensity to save is that proportion of additional income that is not spent. Or 1 minus 0 0,8 or 0 0,2. We can also write it as 1 minus small c. What we don't spend, we save. Now, if there's an increase in income, it induces an increase in consumption. The relation is given by the marginal propensity to consume. And we refer to this as the induced part of consumption. Likewise, an increase in income induces an increase in savings, given by what is not spent. 1 minus C, portion of additional income that is not spent, but what we save. To summarize, an increase in income not only leads to an increase in um, consumption, but also an increase in savings. But we also said when we discussed the consumption by households that part of consumption is not related to income. The autonomous part. Autonomous consumption is mainly fun funded out of part savings. So if we take out funds out of part savings to fund autonomous spending, it implies that part savings will reduce with autonomous spending. So as with consumption, savings consist of an autonomous part minus autonomous C and also an induced part, 1 minus C, Y. Now, some of you might say, but if this is a savings function, it's the mirror of the consumption function, which reads autonomous C plus CY. 